Okay, so this is a short video on the Synthesis uh, DX11 editor, version 1. Uh, this is the main voice window. Um, first thing you'll probably want to do is maybe hit the help file, which will give you um, uh, just a general overview of what you're looking at here. It tells you to set up your MIDI settings, so you'd hit the MIDI button here to set up your MIDI ports, input and output ports here. Uh, you've got the basic voice editor here. You can do this replicates the buttons on the front panel except the initialization which will initialize the patch for you. Uh, you can select different anything from your internal memories basically so any any bank or internal memory or cartridge saved device that you've got one and a switching here. Um, Got a MIDI keyboard where you can quickly um, sort of audition the sound for yourself. Uh, you've got the main algorithm window here. You can switch algorithms like that. You can alter the operator for feedback like that. You can switch different ones on and off to see what the effect is. So if we initialize the patch to a sort of basic sine wave on operator 1 only. If we bring up the level of operator 2 you see that increases in intensity and the link here between 2 and 1, 2 modulating 1 increases in intensity as well. Um, you might, if we change the, hang on, if we change the envelope, again all the, all the envelope for the DX11 is drawn here in the window for you so let's try that and if you want to match the envelope to the other one you do eg1 to eg2 copy like that we can bring up oscillator 3 level we'll bring up oscillator 4 level you can see and we had a little bit of operator 4 feedback as well and then we might want to also copy that to three and that to four. And then we can switch off various things to see what they're doing. Not quite obvious there. More obvious. Uh, we've got the pitch envelope, so we can Again, that gets drawn, so we can put in a bit of pitch modulation. Like that. We've got the LFO section. Uh, we've got up here the uh, the main sort of performance um, parameters, so poly and mono, mono mode. And key transpose, how much pitch bend it will do, what the mod wheel does. Reverb level, portamento time, etc. Uh, these down here, you've got the more esoteric um, modulation stuff. So the aftertouch and the breath, uh, aftertouch and the breath controller settings, what the foot controller does, etc., etc. You've got the LFO section down here. So that's the main voice section there. Um, it's everything that is saved in a voice patch, basically. If we move now to performance mode. Um, again, if we initialize this to, to just to one channel, basically, so on only one note there, everything else is zero notes. Um, the editor won't know what your internal names are at first, so if you can just hit that button there, it'll sync its internal names to the same internal names that you've got in your internal bank. Um, so if we now right, pick one here, Number three, we actually reads in what what the name of that actual um, internal memory bank three is. Uh, if we increase this to one note as well, and if we make that three, and if then we detune that, and we detune that one slightly, we bring the level up. We've got a kind of unison sound. You can add more in up to eight channels. Again, if you hit the help button here, it'll tell you what you might use the performance mode for, and you have individual help buttons in different sections to give you some more detail on what, what the individual bits in here do. Uh, we go to system mode, well, it's just system settings, you know, again, 
you can retrieve a system setting here and get some help on what all these do. Um, effects, you've got four delay, four pan and four call groups on a DX11. Um, these can all be assigned in the performance mode here on the effects select. Do, 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 do. There we go. Um, and you can play up to four notes on, on different keys, which is quite useful in performance mode. Uh, micro tuning again, you can choose all sorts of esoteric micro tuning scales in the octave or for the full keyboard if you want. Personally, I just usually leave it on the equal temperament, but you can play around with micro tuning settings there if you want. And we've got the program change table here, so if you don't know if you're running it from a door or something and you want to. Um, change patches in some particular order you can change you can put anything you like in here basically so that any program change message number zero will select any different patch you like and we move on to the librarians so we've got the file browser window over here we've got a 32 voice bank memory here and a 32 performance bank memory here so these are separate memory areas basically separate voice banks than what is actually in the hardware so we can sort of we can load in the internal void we'll get the, let's get the cartridge one b voices okay they're loaded in now um you they're only loaded into this temporary buffer here so if we choose for instance we double click dx11 dx7 base we go back to the voice that's what we'll have there <laughs> So this is a way of previewing basically what's in the different banks. And again, you can load. So if we go, if we load the TX81Z factory bank, for instance, let's load B, double click that. They're all now loaded into this area here. So they're not actually loaded into the DX11. They're just loaded in here. So you can um, preview them basically. Double click that one. Switch back to voice. And you've got the TX81Z factory trumpet sound. Uh, you can save individual patches to discs. So wh whatever voice and patch is loaded in here, if you say save patch to disc, and you can store it anywhere you like. Um, yeah, just saying I didn't do it. That's fine. Um, you whatever is loaded into here so if you've got your internal voices out the DX11 or out the cartridge and you want to save them back them up to your hard drive you can do that here you can save the voice banks to disk like that you go cancel again it'll warn me that you didn't I didn't save it that's fine I'll just press cancel um, and again the same with the performances you can get the performances out of the DX11 and then save them to disk save performance bank to disk there we go or whatever performance you've set up in here and you quite like it, you just want to save that as an individual one, then just go to the librarian and say, save performance to disk. And you can back that up to disk as well. And you, again, you can, of course, you can load individual. If you load individual patches or performances, um, they will go straight into the voice or the performance edit buffers here. But if you load a bank, it will go straight into this bank section here where you can uh, pick out individual performances or patches to preview. And that's basically about it. Um, I'll, this is the standalone version, basically. There are VST and AU versions for Mac um, and PC. And I'll get onto those next. Here we are inside the door. Um, all we need to do is insert our VST in this case. Wait for it. Okay, so now there's a little bit of setup that we need to do. Um, the editor needs its own dedicated MIDI ports. So what you need to do is to deselect in your door the ones that you're going to use. So in my case, I'm 
I want to deselect that and that because I'm going to use those ports. Okay, so bring it down where you can see it. So in the MIDI setup here, we want to select the ports that we've got it connected to. But we also need those ports deselected inside the door. There we go, like that. Okay, so what we can do now is the big advantage, of course, of the if we grab that MIDI data. Oh, I tell you, we don't know if we don't actually need to. Sorry. So we've got a MIDI track here <clears throat> called MIDI Bass. If we just direct its output at the plugin and we press play. Okay, we've got the MIDI note data going through the plugin so we can. We can also make changes via the editor like this. Um, but what we can also do, if we just stop that a second, because the big advantage, of course, of having it in the door is that we can automate things. So if we go down to the automation lanes, this is Kate Walk, by the way, go to the DX11 editor, choose parameter, and I don't, we'll automate output four level. Okay, just push this out of the way a second and I'll just draw in some draw in some automation up and down, up and down, just give you the idea of what you can do like that. And if we now drag that down and play again, we should find that here we go. Our output four level is going up and down. Stop that again, and if we go into the DX11 on the editor you and choose parameters, you'll see that we have about, yeah, we have about 64 different parameters. That's, oh no, sorry, 47, I think. I know, a few more. Yeah, some for performance mode as well, and some for the effects. So uh, there's a lot of parameters in there that you can automate inside the door if you use the plugin version, which is the big advantage of using the plugin version rather than the standalone. And uh, like I said at the start of the video, there are there's a standalone version, there's a VST version, a VST3 version, and there's also an AU version if you prefer using the audio component plugin as well. Thanks for watching.